gentlemen, welcome to WrestleMania. How's it going, everybody? This is the Nitty Gritty. My name is Chad. With me, as usual, is Leonard. This is a show about wrestling. And like so many other podcasts and shows, we are going to be recapping the WrestleMania weekend events, the WrestleMania 39 weekend events. Um, now, Leonard was busy doing his play, which has been going very well. So he did not get a chance to watch any of the WrestleMania festivities, but he is here to lend his thoughts when uh, he sees fits. Right, Leonard? Yes, yes. Um, my play, which we've talked about in the show, finally wrapped up. I had two shows on Saturday and just slept most of Sunday and uh, had to catch up with some other stuff in the past couple of days. I've been busy with work. So I do know the results. I do generally kind of know what happened. I have not seen anything. Um, and in the fancy Pick'em Facebook group that I do that I've mentioned, Without watching any television, I missed only two matches on night one and two matches on night two. And I and I got a couple matches where I was in the minority of picking that winner. And we'll, we'll hit those when we get to them. All right. Sounds good. Um, so let's just go over uh, one other thing. So I didn't watch all of SmackDown on March 31st with the Friday there. Uh, but I did for whatever coincidence i tuned in right when the andre the giant memorial battle royal was going on and uh you know it was your standard battle royal um bobby lashley won that and you know you have to feel sorry for him in this circumstance he was going to be in a feud with bray wyatt um i have no idea what's going on with bray wyatt if he's injured if there's a character pause again i have no idea what's happening there but they had nothing to do for bobby lashley so they had him win this and, you know, unfortunately, they had to have him, like every other winner, do the stupid pose on the trophy. They've got to stop doing that. I hate it. It's annoying. Stop. Um, so, yeah, that was just a basic battle royal. I really didn't watch anything else on SmackDown. Um, so let's get to uh, the other thing that happened on Friday, which was the Hall of Fame ceremony. Um, Mick Foley and Tori Wilson inducted Stacy Keebler, who still looks outstanding. She mm -hmm. had a good speech, seems like a really nice lady in real life. Um, yes, I saw I saw a clip of that, and I mean, it doesn't look like she's aged today since she's last been on television. Absolutely. Um, Jimmy Hart and Jerry Lawler via video uh, inducted Andy Kaufman into the Hall of Fame. Andy Kaufman's family was there to accept for him. Um, uh, obviously, uh, Jerry Lawler's health is not great right now. So he had to do it from home, but, uh, we, you know, if Andy Kaufman was still alive, this would have been the time he would have came back. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. All those conspiracy theories about him still being alive out there. Like he, yeah. he would have done something here. But how amazing would that have been if he would have shown yeah. up? Yeah, that would have been cool. Um, Ric Flair was there to induct the great Muda. Um, I did watch Flair's speech, which just seemed to be about how much about him. It was all about him. Yeah. And and how he like once took the great mood out and got him laid like that seemed to be what the speech was about. Yeah. Uh, so the two speeches that were commented on as far as who, the person inducting the uh, entrant um, was Ric Flair and Conan. We'll get to Conan's. Uh, Ric Flair's was not unanimously well received for the reason, it, you know, it, it, it would have been Sting, but they do not have access to Sting. I think that they would have. I think Tony Khan would have easily let him do this if they had asked. My my gut tells me that they probably didn't even ask. It's like, well, we have Ric Flair. Let's just use Ric Flair. Um, yeah, he was there. He was there, you know, and he worked with Muda. He did work with Muda at the time. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, the, the great Muda, never a WWE guy. So it was cool to see him here at all. Um, the Warrior Award went to Tim White, who a lot of people probably just know as a referee, but really did so many things, um, you know, behind the scenes and was the right hand man for Andre. Um, so it was really great to see him recognized here. Uh, his brothers accepted on his behalf and, you know, JBL warned us ahead of time, but one of his brothers looks exactly like him and it is a little creepy to see. Um, but uh, yeah, so that was cool. And then Conan inducted Rey Mysterio. Uh, Rey Mysterio didn't get as long as The Undertaker, but it was a long speech um, and it was very good. And Conan's uh, induction 
was was very good. Conan's really showing his age. You know, he's been around for a little bit, but uh, his speech was very good. It was a good main event Hall of Fame ceremony there. I heard his speech was good. I also saw a clip, which I really liked, of Dominic and Rhea Ripley getting up and leaving. Yeah, they walked out, which kind of added to that storyline. Which was which was brilliant. I, I think that was a great move. And apparently, and apparently, via a picture I saw later on, Buddy Myers, uh, who's uh, Rhea Ripley's actual boyfriend, uh, was there as well. Yes, I did see a picture of him present. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that was interesting. Um, it would have been, it would have been great if he walked out with him like that. Oh my god, <laughs> can you imagine the internet? Um, anyway, that didn't happen. But uh, yeah, so you know, the the Hall of Fame Hall of Fame ceremony is kind of gone up and down over the years. Here because it was on Peacock, they let them speak a little bit, which I like. So no complaints from me on that level. Um, very quickly, I'll go through NXT Stand and Deliver. Um, the pre-show match was Tyler Bate and Chase University versus Schism, which uh, consists of Ava, Joe Gacy, Rip Fowler, and Jagger Reed. Um, Chase University is Thea Hall, Duke Hudson, and Andre Chase. Uh, this was for control of Chase University. Who, who cares? Um, this was about a two-star match. Um, you also had a ladder match for the NXT Women's Championship, which started out the actual show. Roxanne Perez, Zoe Stark, Gigi Dolan, Lyra Val Valkyra, Val Valkyria, maybe? I, you know, who knows? Uh, All the NXT names sounds like a random AI generated them. <laughs> yeah, well, in, in terms, some of them, you're not wrong at all. Tiffany Stratton um, and Indy Hartwell. Indy Hartwell would win this uh, for the NXT Women's Championship. She's been around a little bit. Um, you know, so it, it was cool to see her win. Uh, you know, overall, I don't see a ton of females that I'm thinking, oh man, they're going to be the next thing. Like a lot of them have potential, but they just need to grow a little bit. I guess a lot of them kind of fit in the same bag. They're all kind of okay. Uh, I gave that one three stars, uh, for the NXT tag team championship. You had Gallus, Mark Coffey and Wolfgang versus the family, Tony D'Angelo and Channing Stax Lorenzo versus the Creed brothers in a triple threat match gave this one about three and one quarter stars, uh, pretty standard tag team stuff. You know, part of it was parts of it were good. Um, nothing to write home about. Um, you had the NXT North American championship, a five-way match, Wes Lee, Axiom, Dragon Lee, Ilya Dragunov, and JD McDonough. Um, this was my match of this card. I gave it three and three quarter stars. Uh, a lot of really cool spots. Ilya Dragunov is seriously, you know, one of the best things in NXT, in my opinion. Um, he really puts his heart and soul into everything he's doing. Uh, so they have a Wes Lee, a Dragon Lee, and a Dragunov. That's right. That's yeah. that's. <laughs> Uh, Johnny Gargano versus Grayson Waller in an unsanctioned match. Um, Wesley won the previous match, by the way. Uh, Johnny Gargano would win against Grayson Waller. Uh, I gave this one about three and a half stars. NXT is where Johnny Gargano shines. Um, that crowd likes likes to see him wrestle, and you know he did good well, good here. I'm not a big Grayson Waller fan, so you know his work is what it is. Uh, you know he plays the over the top heel. Um, so, yeah, uh, we'll see if Gargano can flourish on the main roster this year. I don't know that that will happen if, unless they have something new for him. But anyway, uh, the NXT Women's Tag Team Championship, Alba Fire and Isla Dawn versus Fallon Henry and Kiana James. Um, and apparently... Now you're just making shit up. Yeah, Fallon Henry and Kiana James have like two dudes who are their managers, you know, I, you know, or whatever. I, I don't know, like... Two young dudes, I guess, who are also wrestlers, maybe. I don't watch NXT anymore. Um, so it's a little, it's a weird, interesting dynamic there. But uh, I gave this one a star in three quarters. It was not long. Nobody really cared about this. Um, yeah. The main event saw Braun Breaker defending the NXT championship against Carmelo Hayes. Three stars for this one. Carmelo Hayes would be the winner. And they're very high on Carmelo Hayes. I, I think he's okay. I don't see him as like somebody who should be pushed to the main roster anytime soon. Uh, by Braun Breaker losing, this would indicate to me that they want to bring him to the main roster at some point soon. Um, it wasn't on Raw that they did that. So who knows what the time frame is there? Um, you know, overall, I'll just say, 
you know, a lot of people bagged on NXT 2.0 and myself included. The NXT going on right now, which I suppose needs to be sh- the blame of or credit needs to be shouldered on Shawn Michaels. I am not a fan of. I, I don't think there is very much talent there that anybody is like aching to see on the main roster. Like, I don't think any of them are going to do anything. <laughs> I I really don't. I, I hope I'm wrong, but like, you know, maybe with the exception of, you know, Gigi Dolan. I like Gigi Dolan. <laughs> Well, I think Braun Breaker has a lot of potential. And in the Facebook pick we do NXT as well. And I did not do as well here. I think I was about 50-50. Yeah. I'd have to go back and double check. I did get Gargano right. I did get Hayes right because I figured they wanted to move Breaker up. So that was my Yeah, and you're right. Braun Breaker has a lot of potential. Um, you know, he's I think he's still very green in spots. So we'll see what happens there. Dragging off, like I said, I liked um I, I don't know. We'll see what they do with him. But uh yeah, so all right, night one. Well, let's go to the stats of WrestleMania in general here. Uh, just a few stats, Leonard, that you might want to comment on. Um, April. It took place from April 1st and 2nd at SoFi Stadium in Inglewood, California. Uh, it was the largest viewership audience in WrestleMania history. It had a record $21.6 million gate. There was 80,497 in attendance on night one and 81,395 on night two. Um, they... <laughs> you know displayed the total attendance of both nights is 161,892 which you know friend of the show eric was commenting on i guess they're assuming that like nobody went to the same both nights <laughs> which we know by green shirt smiley face guy who was there both nights so i think it's funny that they list that as the number because clearly a lot of people went to both shows but yeah but it's the it's the attendance on night 1 and the attendance on night 2 yeah, it's they always play fast and loose with these numbers. Is it's yeah. also the total number of people in the building, including crew. So, well, you know, hey, have you ever been to a church? Yeah. <laughs> have you ever seen the church numbers about the attendance? I don't think I have actually. Okay, so every church I've ever been to at the front of the church has the attendance numbers. And yeah. I've talked to pastors. Part of my job when I go to churches, they count every single person in the building, including themselves. Right. And your same argument, the same people come back from week to week. <laughs> well, so I don't, I don't get that as being where, oh, they're cheating on the numbers. It's the no, no, no. I never, I'm not saying they're cheating. I, I think it's a weird statistic, though. Like, well, it's definitely a number that they are presenting in a way of, hey, this is the most attended WrestleMania ever, yes. considering it was over two nights right. and not one night as it was for years and years and years. Right. And again, if you're doubling the nights, and, and it's not one ticket for both nights, right? You would have to buy two tickets, right? You know, that's a great question. I actually don't know. Okay. So again, you you would be doubling your your uh, ten, your your number money, your money as well, if you have to buy two tickets. Right. Um, and then as far as it being the most watched, um, the fact that it's on Peacock and anyone can watch, pretty much if you have Peacock, you can watch it. So you go from the ability of being able to watch for what, $10 for your Peacock subscription for yeah. the month, as opposed to a $40, $50 pay-per-view. So, so yeah, I think this is numbers relate. So it, 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 it's the present number, right? but when you compare it historically, if you adjust for inflation, if you adjust for two nights, if you do this, you do that. Right. Um, it's probably middle. Right. Um, no, yeah, you're probably right. It, it, you know, people adjust a box office for inflation. It'd be interesting to see somebody do that with WrestleMania numbers. Um, yeah. It had the most social media presence of any WrestleMania with over 500 million views. There was a record $20 million in sponsorship venue doubling last year's number. Uh, merchandise sales were up 20% from the all-time record set last year. So, and in conclusion, this was the first mania with Triple H under creative control. And as we now know, the last one with the company being owned by the McMahon family. We will get to that in a bit. Um, so... WrestleMania, night one. Austin Theory, defending the United States Championship against John Cena, gave this one two and one quarter stars. Uh, John Cena looked like he hadn't been in the ring a lot lately. Um, Some people were commenting on how white he was, (laughs) which I found funny. Um, But yeah, 
you, nobody knew he think, thought he was going to win this. I wouldn't think uh, Austin Theory retained, um, and the match was what it was the most basic match of any basic match that you could have. I, I thought. Um, you know, if you go back and look at what they did to Theory last year, the fact that he gets put over Cena this year, yeah, that's kind of a hey, thanks for playing along type right. of thing. And you know, my my instinct is always like the legend isn't going to job. But Cena, I think, is still technically considered a part-timer. And he is still right. technically, now I don't know if I want to use the word technically, but he is someone who will job. Like, he's never had a problem with jobbing to other people. Correct, yeah. Uh, when the scenario is called for it. So um, so I did go with Theory on this because you get a way more out of Theory winning. And I think Cena understands and respects that, as opposed yeah. to, say, a Hulk Hogan. Um, who would want to go over no matter what? Well, okay. Not to go down that rabbit hole, but I do think Hogan would always job to the people who I think deserved that spot. I mean, he's one of the Mount Rushmore guys for a reason, right? So like he would job to certain people and other people, I think rightly he would flat out say no, but anyway, yes, he has that reputation. <laughs> would Hogan job to Austin Theory? Hell no. Yes. Okay. Do you, do you think that he would have deserved that spot? I say absolutely no. I I think that theory going over Cena or an equivalent legend was probably a good call to give him a boost according to what they think they can get out of him. I agree. And I think Cena was a fine guy to give him a little boost. Mm -hmm. we'll just leave it at that. Okay. We're done. Uh, Moving on. The men's WrestleMania showcase match, uh, which is just a fancy term for the next match, is the four-way Street Profits versus Braun Strowman and Ricochet versus the Alpha Academy versus the Viking Raiders. The Street Profits would win here. Uh, two and three-quarter stars I gave it. Um, not the worst thing I've ever seen. Again, nothing to write home about. Uh, the tag team scene in WWE, to me, is very weak overall. That's not to say all the tag teams are bad, but I like the Street Profits. They won here and then had a match the next night against the new tag team champions. Um, so, you know, I guess that was their brief moment in that limelight. This uh, was uh, one of the matches I got wrong on night uh, one because I went with Strowman and Ricochet as the majority of the people in the pick them did because right. they were the hot super team. I think having ha watched the Rumble and uh, the Elimination Chamber, they seem very high on Montez Ford as a single. Yes. So that would make you think that they would want to break up the Street Profits at some point. But giving you know, a push to the Street Profits here also is a push to Montez Ford, I guess, in the same regard. Right. So uh, this was one I got wrong, but a lot of other people did as well. Although Street Profits were the next pick, a couple people did take the Viking Raiders, and nobody took Alpha Academy. Unfortunately. Uh, I'm a big Chad Gable fan. I think he's very underrated. Um, anywho, uh, the next match, Logan Paul versus Seth Rollins. The ratings, the reviews for this one I was looking at are kind of all over the map. Some people loved it. Other people, you know, thought it was just okay. I gave it three and a half stars. Seth Rollins would win this match, uh, rightly so. The match was pretty good, I'll admit. It was pretty good. I'm not a Logan Paul fan. I think the celebrity involvement the WWE has lately really just doesn't do it for me. Even though these guys are good in the ring, I acknowledge he and Bad Bunny are both very good in the ring. Um, but... You know, so the match, the match was pretty good. I'll give Logan Paul credit for, you know, really, um, you know, kind of assimilating himself to this industry pretty well. Um, so, yeah, it was pretty good. Some people would rate it a lot higher than I did, though. Um, you know, um, initially I was feeling Logan Paul because he is a celebrity. Uh, but I, I found out two things. One, that Paul had pretty much beat the crap out of Rollins every split second up to this point. And that Paul was not signed long term. So that made me go with Rollins, who I think is entering the point in his career where he is, you know, say where Cena was 10 years ago or Randy Orton was 10 years ago, where he is the experienced veteran that can pop up and down the card and work with a variety of people. Yeah, no, I agree with you. And uh, also what you said about Logan Paul kind of getting the upper hand and all the uh, 
TV shows. That was happening each and every single time. So at no point did anybody think Logan Paul, I think, would win, at least not in my end anyway. Um, next match, Trish, Lita, and Becky Lynch versus Damage Control, Bailey, Dakota, Kai, and Io Sky. Two stars on this one. Trish and Lita, a little rough around the edges. To me, this match didn't really have a lot of energy. Um, you know, you're coming off of a four-way tag match, and then Seth Rollins and Logan Paul this is kind of that you know let me up match um uh, there really wasn't a lot going on here to mention it was what it was trish lead and becky would win this in the pick was 50 50 believe it or not ah i went with with uh, the legends because trish and Lita are not jobbing they just are not jobbing that's not going right. to happen right uh and and i did hear this was the worst match of both nights and that Lita was pretty immobile yes Yes, uh, on both counts. And uh, that Trish still looked great. I did see some pictures of Trish at the Hall of Fame. Oh, yeah. There's, there's a meme going around of her, like, walking across the st stage and, like, Dominic licking his lips and, like, Triple H staring at the ceiling so he doesn't look at her. Oh, that's funny. I don't know if you've seen that picture, but that's that's yeah. out there. So, so, yeah, this is one of those things where the legends aren't going to job, even though they probably should have given – this situation and while we're here let me ask you i know that uh, bailey had put out a twitter or something about the dream is over blah 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 and some people think that means that she is leaving while others are just saying no her wrestlemania dream is over whatever the hell that was so i don't know if you know anything about that i think i did see that tweet i have no idea what it reference what's it what it's referencing um yeah i don't know um i mean her, her spot on the card is very middling right now yeah. uh, you know I, I like damage control as a group but they don't seem to have a lot for any of them which is uh, a shame uh, but yeah who knows I guess we'll find out if she leaves yeah. um, the next match Rey Mysterio versus Dominic Mysterio gave this one three and one quarter stars um, this was one that I honestly wasn't sure which way it was going to go um, if I would have picked I would have picked Dominic to win because I thought that they were going to stretch it out. I uh, picked Dominic as well. And the majority, a slight majority, I think it was like 56%, 57% picked Dominic to win. Cause I think that's the way the storyline was built. I think definitely think that Ray would put over his son at WrestleMania, uh, given the situation. Uh, if it was anybody else on the planet, I would have took Ray Mysterio because he's not going to job on WrestleMania on the weekend that he gets into the hall of fame. Again, the caveat, the asterisk being this was his son. And I know that he wants to make sure that his son has a long, successful career. And Dominic, for any shortcomings in the ring, is extremely hot as a character right now for them. Yeah. And, and so I very much thought that Ray was going to put him over. But I could see them saying, the them as in creative, going, no, we're not going to job Ray out at WrestleMania when he gets in the Hall of Fame. And Dominic, of course, saying, no, I'm not, Dad, I'm not going to let right, him. Right. Let me let you lose to me, given the situation. So, but I think this does. I think they will. I think I think they will continue to extend the storyline. I know we're going to get to what happened with with Rhea and Charlotte, and how there's a question mark there, giving what their stable is going to look like going forward, given where Rhea might be. But um, yeah, I think there's certainly more storytelling available. Yeah, because, uh, you know, what would happen at the end of this match is Bad Bunny would stop Dominic from cheating with a chain. Um, and then the next night on Raw, you would see that they're obviously setting up the tag match for WrestleMania Backlash, which will probably be uh, Bad Bunny and Rey Mysterio versus Damian Priest and Dominic Mysterio, uh, you know, because it's in Puerto Rico. Bad Bunny's the host. I don't know why anybody would give a shit about that match but <laughs> there you have it a lot of people like bad bunny i'm in the minority in that i already i'm aware well aware um but anywho um the next match rhea ripley versus charlotte for the smackdown women's title i gave this one four and a half stars this is one of the best female matches i have ever seen um it was outstanding from start to finish um i applaud both women here um charlotte is you know a bona fide legend i heard that she's going to take some time off i don't know if that's true or not um but i, I knew that rhea ripley was going to get the nod here 
She had a the Iron Woman role at the Royal Rumble. Um, they're obviously very high on her, and they should be. Um, so yeah, this was a great, great match. Um, so if you, if anybody out there wants to watch one match from night one, I would probably give the slight edge to this one. This is, I said, if I go back and watch anything, this is what I was going to say. If I watch anything, I'm going to watch this and probably the tag match that we're going to get right. to. Uh, and this might surprise you. Uh, I did. I have not listened to all of it, but I have listened to some of Jim Cornette's commentary on WrestleMania, and this was his favorite match of both nights. And in, and and he put Flair and Ripley over as not only the best women that WD has, but probably their two best talents that they have. And 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 for him having the reputation, which is false, of not liking women's wrestling, mm-hmm. um, you know that 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 kind of that kind of says something. But um, everything I've heard, this match was fantastic, and this would be the one I would want to go back and watch. Yeah, I agree with uh, what he said um, as far as them being some of the best talents in the company right now. Um, But anyway, we were wrong about the uh, women's tag match being the worst one because the next match is the worst one. Oh, I think that because that was not it was not an announced match. Uh, I will put that caveat on it. Of the card that was announced. Yeah. Okay. That fine. So, that enough. should be the caveat. I should say on that. Yes. Yeah. Pat Pat McAfee comes out, has an impromptu match with the Miz. <laughs> Dud from me. Um, the main event: Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens versus the Usos for the tag team championships. Four and a quarter stars here. This was a great tag match, and I was really glad to see Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens win. It's not where I think. Sami Zayn should have been in this storyline, but I will take it. The crowd was hot for it. Everybody was really having fun with the fact that they won. This was a good long tag match, which is something that WWE hasn't had in ages um, with like just two tag teams going for a long time. Um, So this was a good change of pace from what you usually see from their format. Is this the first time since WrestleMania won that a tag match has main evented? I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. And I know if they went back and forth on, or at least the rumor mill did on whether this was going to be the main event or Charlotte versus Rhea was going to be the main event. And I think they made just to cut you off initially what I saw. um, And if I can find this graphic, I'll put it up. The main event was announced as Austin theory and John Cena. No, that was never announced. Never, really? ever, 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 the ever announced. that I saw had an order of matches. The picture, the picture was the picture. Right. And the match was listed at the top, but it was announced as being the opener before okay. that graphic was ever released. Okay. It was given that picture because it was considered the most important match or the one that people I think a lot of news outlets were fooled in that regard. Were fooled. It was very uh, confusing and it was incorrect and it might have been done in that way. But you, but if you go and you dig deep, you can not, not find an announcement from WWE. You can find from other outlets saying, oh, it is because look at this picture. Right. But they never announced it. The only announcement they ever made was that that was going to be the opener. Okay. And then the, the, the rumor behind that was that it was either going to be Ripley versus Flair or, and I also heard that they were promised that at one point. Right. That this is the stuff I heard as well. Yeah. Or it was going to be the tag, the tag match and the tag match, I think makes the most sense because it had the most heat and the most storyline. Now, again, the the wins match might have been better by a hair. um, I think it made the most sense to have that be the tag match, be the main event. I think that was a smart call there. Especially if you want to send the fans home happy that night. Yeah. All right. WrestleMania night two starts out with Brock Lesnar versus Omos. I gave this one two and a half stars. It was short. We knew Brock was going to win. You know, Brock is going to job to certain people. But, you know, I feel like he is in that Hogan territory at this point. So he ain't going to job for just anyone and certainly not this guy <laughs> no no you know, again to reference jim Cornette, he he says that almost is the type of guy back in the territory days you would use to steal a house like you would bring him into a territory because he's big 
and he's got a look and, and you would, but he can't do, but he's bad in the ring. He is. Yes. <laughs> so you would, you would bring him in and let him beat up the baby face and look imposing. And then you would, you would get people in the door for one big house and go, well, this guy sucks. And then you move him on. Yeah. And unfortunately this is the match that Brock got stuck with, but uh, mm-hmm. you know, it is what it is. Um, next match, the women's WrestleMania showcase match. Um, Ronda Rousey and Shayna Baszler versus Liv Morgan and Raquel Rodriguez versus Natalia and Shotzi versus Chelsea Green and Sonya Deville. Ronda and Shayna would win this. They didn't really do anything. And then all of a sudden they got tagged in and ended the match in short order. Um, it looked like Shayna Baszler was injured somehow. Um, again, it was what it was. A star and a half from me on that one. Is that your worst match of both nights? Well, I, as a minus the mismatches, we'll say this minus yeah. the mismatches. Yeah, now that, that I'm looking at my ratings, yes. It yeah, was. okay. Yeah, because it was just like, I don't know, like Chelsea Green and Sonya Deville are an awkward tag team. Like Shotzi kind of getting fast forwarded through NXT to the main roster is still puzzling to me. Um, you know, these are just thrown together tag teams, with the exception of Ronda and Shayna, who at least have an MMA history. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, uh, didn't care for it, but, uh, I did like the next match, which is for the IC title, Sheamus versus Drew McIntyre versus Gunther. Um, as much as I love this match, I gave this one four and a, and a quarter stars. I still would have preferred Gunther and Brock. Um, I think that that is, that would have been a good match, but this one was absolutely outstanding. These guys went as stiff as possible. Uh, throughout the whole thing. And this is the time when I'm going to bring up Michael Cole's commentary. You can notice a difference since Vince had stopped being in people's ear. Michael Cole sounded very enthusiastic uh, with uh, uh, Corey Graves both nights. He really seems like he's loving what he's doing. Um, So, and like this match, he was like really like, he was like standing up. (laughs) <laughs> like he was very excited about what was going on. So that was cool to hear. Uh, but yeah, this match was really, really good. I didn't think Gunther was going to retain here because I thought for sure that would be a sign of them wanting to move him up the card. Uh, but he remains the IC champ. Um, so they're clearly not ready for him uh, to move up just yet. But. Well, I took Gunther in the pick them and everyone else agreed with you. Um, Sheamus was the majority. A few people did take Drew. Right. Um, I, I even if they want to move Gunther up, I think they can do that while keeping the belt on him. I suppose so. Um, yeah, I mean, and, and, I mean, you don't see that as much these days, but you it could happen. Yes, I mean, back 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 further, you you saw that more, you know. Right. Like Warrior Hogan at WrestleMania Six, for an example, you know. Right. They clearly uh, like him a lot. I, I was telling my daughter, like, expect to see him in one of the main title pictures maybe next year yeah you know lex luger fought rick flair when he was the u.s champion you know those types right. of situations so i think you could so i i, I and, and here's the thing this might have been foreshadowing of the main event which i know we're going to get to because i know a lot of people thought that gunther was going to be positioned to be cody rhodes's uh first opponent after he got done with roman reigns because of the royal rumble uh where gunther and and he were first and last so that may have been foreshadowing there if they want to keep the belt on Gunther. But I did go with Gunther here. Uh, I love Gunther. I definitely think he is going to be – he could possibly be in the main event of WrestleMania next year. That's I, I what I'm asking. Is a definite, definite possible, and if not within the next few years. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah, we'll get to who I thought would Cody would have faced had he won uh, a little bit later. Um, next match – Bianca Belair versus Asuka for the Raw Women's title. Um, this was a good match, too. Not quite as good as Rhea and Charlotte. I gave this one three and three quarter stars. Um, I, I like Asuka a lot. I, I still, I was hoping she would win. I didn't think she would, and she did not. Bianca retained. They really, really like Bianca Belair, and for good reason. I, I think that she's a good character. She's good in the ring. Um, and, you know, I just think that the problem now is she's approaching Reigns territory in that who else is there for her to face now 
They did have a short confrontation between Bianca and Rhea Ripley on Raw the next night, but that was clearly just a Raw after WrestleMania tease that will go nowhere. But, like, yeah, so Bianca, like, she's great. I, I just I don't know who they're going to put with her now that would be a, you know, legitimate contender. But we'll see. So this was a, a one of the two matches I missed on night two. And I and I, this was the one I went against my gut on. I, I really did think that Bianca was going to retain that they were going to side with her. But it's a lot of what you were saying. She had the belt for so long. What do you do next with her? You move to Asuka. And when we watched the Elimination Chamber, Asuka was just built as this monster. Um, right. it, it just seemed like it was poised to go to her, at least in the short term, to freshen up Bel Air. Um, that did not happen. And the majority of people in the pick uh, that I did had – had Oscar as well. So, so most people were, were considering Oscar for the win on this. Yeah. Um, the next match. <laughs> so the next match was supposed to be the Miz against Shane McMahon. So I'm watching this and all of a sudden Shane's music hits. And I was like, wow, this was not an expected thing to have happen, but Shane comes out and immediately tears his quad and it was like father like son yeah and you know i could see that something was wrong and you know what a lot of people were giving praise to snoop dogg for immediately improving this and he to his credit did a great job of moving on very quickly and like put doing the worst people's elbow i've ever seen in my entire life on uh the miz so I lied earlier. I did watch one thing, and this was it. Okay. Because uh, my wife has a friend whose husband is big into wrestling, and they were watching WrestleMania, and we were getting ready for bed Sunday night, and she comes in the room. She said um, her friend just texted her that Snoop Dogg just wrestled a match. <laughs> and And I jumped on YouTube, and they had already posted – the WWE themselves had already posted the clip. Right. With Shane so, or no? No, no Shane. It was minus uh, Shane. Yeah. I saw I, I saw that late. I did see the clip of that later, but this was just of Snoop getting in the ring and hitting the Miz and then hitting the elbow, uh, which right. which was hilarious in and of itself. And I did see Shane, and Shane looked – I know the man is in his mid-50s. He looked out of shape. Yeah. He looked puffy. Which is kind of – yes, I agree. Um, it was just kind of hard to tell based on his ring gear, which is just, you know, a baseball gear. Right. I mean, he was dressed kind of like what right, he always is, but his face, to be honest, he looked like me. He had a very round face. Well, he did look out of shape. I, yeah. I will say I will say that. I You know, who knows when that decision was made to have him in this. Um, the next match, Edge versus Finn Balor, hell in a cell. Um, I gave this one three and a quarter stars. Not the best Hell in the Cell match, not the worst. This feud was played out before this. Um, it's very much played out now. Mm -hmm. um, Edge would be the victor. I had heard a rumor that Tony Khan had agreed to let Christian go for this one night so that Gangrel and Christian could come out with him as the brood. Um, they did have a brood intro for Edge, but Gangrel nor Christian were there. So apparently those I heard were rumors that Gangrel was supposed to have been there. I heard those rumors going into the night. I uh, would have been cool to see that happen, but it did not. Um, and uh, Finn Balor came out as the demon, which was really cool in NXT. I had my wife and my uh, my wife watching this with me, and I was like, "Oh man, you should see this entrance!" And it just hasn't aged as well as it should. <laughs> um, but anywho, um, yeah, this. This this Hell in the Cell match didn't do a lot for me. Um, it was okay. You know, both these guys are very good in the ring, but, um, you know, it, it just kind of was – it was good, but blah as well. Um, you know, um, this was a match that I got right and that majority of other people go got wrong. Only a couple people took Edge with this. But Edge is not jobbing Hell in the Cell. He's, he, at WrestleMania, he's just not. That's not a thing that he's going to do. Right. While you can say he's in a position where he could put someone like Finn Balor over and probably should, he's not in this circumstance. Yeah, and you see, I think personally, like, it was clear last year that Edge will never be the world champion again. Never, ever. 
Like no. that's not going to happen. For goodness sakes, they had Roman Reigns pin two people at the same time. So I think personally, Edge should have jobbed to Finn Balor here. If I think he should win, have, but he's not going to. No, I agree. Um, and you know, and, and win, at the elimination chamber, that tag match with Edge and Beth versus Ripley and uh Balor. Uh was it Ripley and Balor or Ripley and Priest? I don't remember. Uh, I think it was Ripley. Bauer. It was Ripley and Bauer. Bauer. Yeah. Bauer. Anyway, I, I was I picked them for that because they're not jobbing to them. And again, I was in the minority uh, in the pick them on that. So yeah. I just think that Edge is never going to put these guys over unless it is uh, a two minute garbage match on Raw where it just doesn't matter. A doesn't matter situation to say he did it. Right. Um. Last but not least, uh, we have the main event. Um, and, you know, before I get to this, I'll just say, you know, night one, night two, I was really having a lot of fun watching WrestleMania this year. Uh, you know, I thought that it had a lot of energy. The stage setup was really cool. Um, I didn't even get to some of the celebrity involvement, um, you know, uh, some of the people that would come out. Uh, you know, because we've been going longer here on the matches. So the celebrity involvement, you know who they are. Uh, but uh, I was enjoying it. I thought that there was a lot of good matches. And for somebody like me who hasn't watched a lot of the TV lately, I'll check out the clips um, on uh, maybe YouTube or Instagram. I'll check some of that stuff out there just to keep up with it. But I really don't watch the shows anymore for the reason that there's just nothing immediate nothing urgent that's calling for me to watch it um and uh so you get to this main event roman reigns versus cody rhodes say what you will about the outcome they did a good job of building cody rhodes for this moment i have to give them credit for that because you really did think that he was a legitimate contender for this um the match itself overall I gave four stars <clears throat> because I did think that the work in the ring was pretty good. By the end, it was overbooked. And I just thought it was the most flat ending that you could possibly have. Um, you have Roman Reigns retaining so much interference going on. Um, it, it just, it, it, I, I was surprised that they didn't go with Cody and on a side tangent, if Cody had won this, I would have predicted his first opponent um, post mania would be uh, Seth Rollins. Uh, I heard that a lot of people say that as well too, because of, of the history between the two of them from last year before he. Yeah. Um, Cody yeah. I just, I was, to me, I was very disappointed, not because I'm a huge Cody fan, but I was disappointed that, you know, and to kind of echo just before we got on, I was listening to some of Brian Alvarez's comments. Uh, the tweet that was put out was, uh, you know, Brian Alvarez. He's like the guy, whoever it was, the guy was like, my man is defeated. <laughs> Vince McMahon has destroyed him <laughs> um, because this just, you know, he Brian Alvarez was saying the last eight months are a dream that is now over. Um, you know, I will echo what friend of the show Eric said in that they got lucky a little bit with the Sami Zayn component of the past eight months. They don't think they expected him to be as popular as he was. And now it's just over and it's just like, it didn't happen. And yes, they're the tag team champions. I'll be shocked if this lasts very long. I really, really will. But mm -hmm. it's just, it's so, you know, and I was thinking to myself about this Leonard before we got on here. And I was thinking about like how long Bruno was the champion and how long Hogan was the champion. And then I thought to myself, in no way is Roman on the level of those guys in terms of like, gosh, I got to see every match this person does like Roman Reigns is not that type of must see guy. I like Roman Reigns mm -hmm. and I think there's been some positives to his reign, but it's just now what now what there is no now what they mm -hmm. have no one for him to face now. Literally. Yeah. <laughs> I would love to see that. And like anybody who says, Oh, Gunther, Gunther's not going to face him now. Like they're like a heel versus heel. That's not going to happen. Come on. Like, you know, it's just well, a lot of what I heard. It, it, it's the Lex Luger syndrome, you know, 
he got lugered. I've heard that a lot that that Cody got lugered. So that you, lugered. I don't even know if I would say that. I one thing I would I saw that I agree with now in retrospect is they were never, and I said this many months ago. I questioned it with you. They were never going to let a guy who was just on AEW win the main event at WrestleMania, and I think there is more truth to that vince or no vince remember it was triple h's throne that cody destroyed (laughs) like so i think there's more truth to that than anybody will ever admit because cody rhodes will never be as over as he was leading up to this match no do you think they will put the belt on him at some point in the future not wrestlemania but could he be rebuilt and win at SummerSlam? I, 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 I don't see that happening. It could happen. It could happen. Um, you know, this was the story they were preparing for, like him mm-hmm. winning the belt at Mania. You know, uh, something his dad never had. All this kind of stuff. I suppose that could still happen at SummerSlam. Um, but I don't know. That the, is some of the the chat I heard online that uh, I would call Rain apologists. We're like, oh, well, no, you know, you got to do more storytelling. It's only three months. Well, three months in Rumble, but not three months total, as you said, more than eight months. Um, oh, and, 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 and they're doing a slow burn and they're going to do this and that. And like, eh, I don't think they are. I think this is where you would pull the trigger. Or you didn't pull the trigger. And again, this is the second match I got wrong on night two. And most people did. A couple of people did go with Reigns in, in the pick that we had. But the majority of people went Rhodes. Because it just was totally, totally 100% built for Rhodes to win. But after I saw the result, I kind of went, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm <laughs> sure it it didn't surprise me, even though I think myself and everyone thought that Rhodes was a, was a lock. When I saw what happened, it didn't surprise me. See, I wouldn't even, I don't think I would have, if, if somebody had asked me before, I would have picked him. I don't want, I wouldn't have said 100%. Um, but, you know, I, I just, I was talking with Eric about this and I said to him, you know, they, I can only think of two reasons why they would have gone with Reigns here. Um, you know, Eric had said, which there might be some truth to that at this point, they're just uh, trolling the internet fans <laughs> with some of these finishes, um, which, you know, it could be something along those lines or as like, just something as stupid as, ah, well, we want him to be champion for longer so he can break more of the legends records. Um, or it could be tied into maybe you want your marquee guy as the champion when the deal with Endeavor goes through, um, which we know now um, that Endeavor, the parent company of UFC, bought WWE. It was announced on Monday. It was rumored Sunday evening and was officially announced Monday. Whether or not either of those reasons are true, I don't know. The fact is Roman Reigns is still the champion. I would be shocked if Cody wins against him at SummerSlam. Um, you may, that, that you have to keep Cody hot until then. And based on what happened on Raw, you know, I don't know. So very quickly, Raw, you would have Triple H come out and make a speech, basically just assuring everybody that the company is not going to change, yada, yada, yada. Um, And for what it's worth, Endeavor appears to let UFC kind of run on their own. Um, And so that gives people encouragement for WWE that it'll kind of let they'll kind of let them run on their own. It's not as bad as the Saudis, which were rumored. (laughs) Um, And maybe it's not the best option that people wanted, but it is what it is. Um, So we can only I always thought and I was in the minority that it was going to be NBC Universal because of the Peacock deal. Right. And they did not want to jeopardize that programming content. Right. Now, to my knowledge, that programming content is not going away at this time. Right. Even though I have heard rumors that Endeavor might launch their own UFC, WWE, whatever they got else in the coffers, streaming service, their own deal. But we would have to see. I'm not sure how long the peacock deal is for yeah and uh, you know i'm sure that that'll have to run out um i can tell you this if they're planning on going back to regular pay-per-view prices with wwe 
that would be the biggest mistake of all mistakes. <laughs> They're going to see a huge, huge dip in people watching. Definitely. But that's just speculation, obviously. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Triple H, after he was done, Roman Reigns came out. Then Cody came out and, you know, they were trying to tease that it was going to be a rematch. Everybody knew it wasn't going to be that. Instead, they set up the all anticipated Roman Reigns and Solo Sokoa versus Cody and Brock Lesnar tag match, um, which would turn out to be Brock turning on Cody at the end and destroying him. I I don't know why they think that's a, 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 a highly anticipated dream match. I, I, again, I don't, I don't think it is, but I think when you look at the chess pieces, it's a move that to their minds makes sense. I, yeah. If you got main eventer A and main eventer B, and we don't want either one of them to go party with Roman, then you got to put them against each other. That's just math. I guess. And maybe to the logic of saving Cody for SummerSlam again, maybe, but I don't know. Brock gave the finger as it, as it was going off the air. <laughs> so I don't know when we're going to see Brock next, you know, but uh, yeah. Uh, and elsewhere in Raw, um, I already mentioned the Bianca Rhea confrontation, and then you had Matt Riddle returned. Yay for that. Um, it was a very, it was, it was not an exciting Raw after WrestleMania. They still, it's funny, after the New Jersey one, which people hijacked that I was at, um, they still, they refer to it now as the Raw after WrestleMania. You never know what's going to happen. And boy, they just don't put any thought or excitement into it anymore. They don't care. Um, I, I got to tell you, Leonard, after all this, like I said, there were some good matches. WWE still knows how to put on a show. But overall, I'm left with a very apathetic mood towards the WWE product. I, I just, there's nothing that I saw that would entice me to say, Dan, I've got to tune in because I want to know what happens now that I've seen this. There's none of that. There was some good matches, but there's nothing that makes me want to say, oh, man. I can't wait to see what happens with X, Y, Z. I'm just, I'm just kind of left being like, eh, whatever. Do you think your opinion would have changed if night one was night two and night two was night one? No. Okay. No, no. I, let me ask you, having heard my opinion and others' opinion, Jim Cornette, whoever, do you regret not watching it? No, not at all. Like like we said there, I'm interested in watching Ripley versus Flair and uh, the Usos versus Zayn and Owens and Rhodes versus Reigns, and that would be about it. So right. three so matches out of yeah, uh, 12, three. Right. Yeah. That says a lot, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Um, like I said, I didn't get to, uh, you know, all the celebrity involvements uh, there, uh, although I meant to. Um but uh, you can look up who sang America the Beautiful on both nights. They were both pretty okay overall. Um, so, yeah, let, uh, let me know what you thought of the show. Um, a lot of my friends weren't watching it live. So I really didn't have a lot of people to text <laughs> during, uh, you know, during the, each, each night um, because everybody was doing other stuff. Um, but, uh, but, yeah, overall, the mania itself, it was a good mania overall. Uh, you know, I can't just crap on the whole thing because of the main event of night two. Um, but uh, overall, both nights were about an eight, eight point five, you know, uh, thereabouts for me anyway. So let me know what you thought of it uh, in the comments, if you agreed or disagreed. Um, I would say the Rhea Charlotte match was my match of the weekend. Um and there was a lot of other wrestling going on that I didn't get a chance to see. Josh Barnett's um, little little thing that he does. Uh, I want to say blood sport, but I don't know. I yeah, well, that's correct. I saw like a um, card for that. Yeah, then Ring of Honor, Super Card of Honor, uh, was also on. I didn't get a chance to watch to watch that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, always a lot of wrestling going on the, that weekend. You know, there's only so much time in the day. Um, but uh, again, check us out on. Every, anywhere you listen to podcasts we have other video segment surgery uh random match reviews stupid questions um as well as our full-length episodes so for leonard my name is chad we will see you next time and alexa see you out